Hello everybody, Luke here and welcome back to the channel. So, there's an old video on the channel which I think deserves to be re-uploaded and that is called uh, Cutting Glass with Ink. So this is an example that I did earlier and I actually did this on my second attempt which is <laughs> pretty fantastic if you have a look what the result is like. So, I'll give a closer look at that which is pretty cool. It's nice and smooth because I used wet dry sandpaper which I will go into more depth in a little while. So, let's actually get into it. The materials that you're going to need is a glass bottle or glass jar of some sort and also you're going to want some ink. That's the absolute bare minimum of materials that you're going to need but there's one other thing that I'd recommend and that is some masking tape. And the only reason I recommend this is because it, help, it helps keep your cuts nice and neat and gives it a nice straight edge. So let's actually get into it and I will move the camera. Firstly I would recommend you using the masking tape uh, to wrap around the jar to try to achieve a nice straight line. Uh, this will help with keeping everything nice and neat when it actually comes to cutting the glass. So just try to keep it nice and straight. There you have it. So the next part of this is to get your ink and just run your ink around this line all the way around and you want to let that dry. There you have it. So here's a closer look of what it should look like once you're at this part. The next step is to allow that to dry and then we're actually going to do something fantastic. So I'm going to let it dry and then I'm going to move the camera. So now it's dry, the next part is to actually cut the glass. And to do that we need a microwave. <laughs> and all you want to do is put your glass into the microwave and my setting is on medium to low and you just want to put that in for about 10 to 20 seconds but you'll hear it and then you'll know when it's actually cut through so. there we go <laughs> We? So there we go. Your next part is just to. I don't think I put it in long enough. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to put that in for another couple seconds. Ah, oh, look at that. Perfect. Almost perfect. <laughs> okay, so that's, our, that's my result. And we've got this little bit here, but if you look on the inside, I can definitely tell that that's cracked. So, if that happens, just grab a pair of pliers. <laughs> and you just want to lightly grip the glass and just pull towards you. There we go, look at that. Absolutely perfect. Cooey, that is so cool. Right, so now we've got that far, the next part is to actually sand it. So I'm going to move the camera back and I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'll see you in a second. So now we're finally on the last part, and that is to actually sand down these edges a little bit because sometimes they come out a little bit more jagged but most of the time they come out really clean but it's always important to give it a bit of a sand uh, well sand it down a little bit just so uh, these edges are going to be a little bit more blunter and you won't actually hurt yourself on it so what I've got here is some wet and dry sandpaper and it comes with assorted medium to fine to extra fine grits inside of this so uh, 80 grit, 
180 grit and 320 grit, which is quite good. So what I'm on at the moment is the 80, but I'm not gonna be using this straight away. I wanna go for a much finer grit just so I can get them edges down a little bit. And then I'm gonna take it on to this, which is the 80 grit, which is the medium. So it's quite, it's quite rough. So obviously this is wet and dry. So I've just put a little bit of water on it. And this is a process where strength doesn't really matter. It's more about persistence and being a little bit more light-handed when you're actually sanding this down. So as an example, I'll just put it down like that. I lightly rest my hand on the top and I, and I just go around in circles for, it's going to take a little while, it's going to take about 20 minutes to get it absolutely perfect. So I'm going to sand this down now, I'm going to show you the different grits and then I'll show you the finish, uh, I will show you the finished result which is going to be absolutely fantastic. So. Here's an example of the 320 grit that I'm going to use first. So on the back it says P1200, if that, may, if that makes it any easier for people to get hold of this stuff. And it's the same thing, I'm just going to put a little bit of water on here, and I'm just going to go around in the circular motion like I just said, and I'll be back once I've gone through both these stages. So I'll see you guys in a second. Welcome back, and you're going to see this puddle of just water all over this table. And that's because I've just been sat here for about 15 minutes sanding this down between grits. And I'm very, very, very almost there, as you can see. I'm quite close. So there's only a little bit here that needs to be re-sanded down. Um, and that's it. If I if I'd have kept going with that for the next five minutes, that would have been completed. But what I have in store, or my plan is, is to coat this rim in something like Plaster Dip anyway. Uh, to give it a nice look to it and also a little bit of decoration. So <laughs> I thought I'd quickly tune back in to show you this. I'm going to plaster dip this and I'm going to show you the final result. So I'll see you guys in a second. Welcome back. And there's going to be two reasons why I'm going to be plaster dipping this today. And don't forget this is an optional step. Um, the only reason I'm doing it is because one, it makes it look nicer and two, it makes sure that these edges are completely safe. Even though they usually are, that's just another reason why I wanted to plaster dip it. So what I've done here is I've got some painter's tape and I've just wrapped around a nice neat line all the way around. And so that means that the plaster dip can seep past this part and I'll still get a nice straight, uh, straight lip afterwards. So I'm gonna dip this once it's dipped, I'm going to leave it to dry, and then I'll show you the finished result, and that should be the end of the video. You want to be really careful, just because this can go quite wrong. And there we go, we're plaster dip. So I'm going to leave that to dry, I'm going to take off this tape, and I'm going to show you the final result of all of this. So, again, I'll see you guys in a second. Welcome back everybody. So we are finally at the end of what we aim to achieve and that was to create something by cutting the glass with our ink and that's exactly what we've done and you're going to notice that I've added a little sticker onto this and this is just to specify that this is going to be my personal pen pot that I'm going to be using on a day, day to day basis which is going to be pretty cool. Um, the plaster dip helped a lot. That is now completely safe. I'm going to try and give you a closer look of that. The plaster dip job isn't amazing, <laughs> but it still makes it look just purely unique, really. That's, uh, uh, that's what pops to mind for me. But that is really cool. Another thing to mention is that we've got an Instagram account and it's going to be very active, hopefully in the next couple of days. Uh, if that's interested anyone, the handle to follow is at fwg underscore insta and me and Rob are going to be personally posting some stuff on there. So, uh, hopefully that was interesting to you guys and if you've got any questions or any feedback, please put them in the comments because I always try to read my comments anyway. So, again, have a good, have a good day guys and I'll see you later.